Well, thank you everybody for coming, for staying this late. <laughs> I know you're tired, you're looking forward to have a beer, but we will do it shortly. Well, today I'm going to talk about the interaction on the potential cascading effects of uh, trophic and passive rewilding. I'm not going deep into the definitions of trophic and passive rewilding because we have already seen it. And what are, I'm going to do is going directly to what is the context in the Mediterranean basin, even if we already have some. Okay, about passive rewilding, here you can see in this map, as we have already seen, that passive uh, rewilding or the afforestation of the recovery of vegetation in uh, pasture lands or abandoned or, or abandoned lands uh, that were previously cultivated is uh, frequent in Europe and also in the Mediterranean basin. This is represented in, in grey and in white we have represented the areas that are currently cultivated. Uh, according to this, this topic, this passive rewilding or abandonment is a topic that is quite well studied uh, and is continuously and exponentially interesting the scientific community. So we are pretty well aware of the ecosystem effects of passive rewilding or land abandonment and we are going to see some of them. Well in green you can see the positive effects of um, passive rewilding and in red you can see the negative effects of passive rewilding. And I will particularly focus on the first uh, ecosystem effect, afforestation and vegetation recovery. Because this is one of the most common and most uh, studied uh, ecosystem effects. And also because the other ecosystem effects that we can detect are pretty related to how much afforested is an, an, an abandoned land or how much the vegetation has recovered in this place. Well, for afforestation and vegetation recovery in, in areas subjected to passive um, rewilding, mesocarnivores are really a key element in the ecosystem. And you may wonder why. Well, this is because in the Mediterranean, the first plants that usually, the first woody plants that usually colonize um, areas subjected to passive rewilding are shrubs, usually bearing fleshy fruits and fleshy fruits are dispersed by a wide array of vertebrates in the Mediterranean. But mesocarnivores are among the most frequent um, dispersers in these areas and they have certain traits, such as large uh, body size. And this makes them especially effective dispersers in these areas because they have wide home ranges, large dispersal distance and gait width. So they are not limited to what they consume or not, and they can perform um, long movements. That this is important in a context of passive rewilding because seed sources may be far away from the area that is uh, subjected to this afforestation or vegetation recovery process. And another relevant um, trait of these mesocarnivores is how they move on the territory. The uh, landscapes subjected to passive management are usually a mosaic of uh, patches of remnant vegetation and cultivated areas and areas subjected to passive management. So mesocarnivores are able to move to this uh, whole landscape and thereby the probability to move seeds into the whole area is higher than other forgivers that are more specialists and that they usually move more frequently in the areas of the remnant patches. Well, I wanted to bear this in mind for the subsequent part of the, of the talk. Now we will go into trophic rewilding and well, we may wonder what, how much do we know about trophic rewilding in the Mediterranean. We don't know very much, but this is normal because this is a very recently proposed term and we have already seen. But what we know and that it has already been mentioned uh, in this symposia is that several large high trophic level species have recently expanded their populations in the Mediterranean basin, in, in other areas, but also in the Mediterranean basin, owing to active reintroductions or to natural expansions of their populations. Some of these examples that we have seen are large ungulates, but also we have predators. We have the bulls and the Iberian lynx. And uh, as top predators, uh, sorry, so according to this, we can see that trophic rewilding 
maybe occurring in the Mediterranean landscape, even with a proper intention to do so. And we are not very aware of which, of which may be the ecosystem effects of this um, trophic, uh, indirect trophic uh, rewilding. So we will focus uh, now on these uh, ecosystem effects of the range reductions or natural expansion of these top predators in the Mediterranean. Well, top predators can control the populations of smaller predators. And by doing so, they may affect subsequent trophic levels, cascading down to the ecosystem producers, generating a trophic cascade. <coughs> this is a simplified uh, food web of a Mediterranean ecosystem in which we have the mesocarnivores as the top level of the food web, and their population may be, uh, should be controlled by intra guild competition and resources abundance and profitability. And this may lead to a specific effects on lower trophic levels. This, is, uh, this however, uh, may be a context of a mesopredator's release. So we may wonder what happened when the predators are back and they may exert a negative control. They may control the abundance of their mesocarnivores, reducing their abundance and thereby removing the effect of the mesopredator release. Well, this may generate a change in the sign of the interactions or the strength in the interactions that were established under this uh, previous scenario of mesopredator release. Well, now we are going to provide some results on some empirical work that we have done to, with, with this theoretical framework as, as background. Well, the first example is with the wolf that has uh, experienced a uh, recent expansion after a historical period of French contraction in the Iberian <laughs> Peninsula, as you can see in these figures. So this is more or less the current situation, and this is where we have performed uh, a study. It's this area of central Spain in which uh, there is um, this area, sorry, in which uh, bulls were present before the 2000 and they were later expanded into this area. So here we selected uh, grids, plots with and without the bull. And we wanted to uh, answer to this question. If bull fat presence reduced the mesocarnivore community abundance and or if uh, bull present uh, modified the scent marking behavior of the mesocarnivore community. Well, um, I'm not going into methodological details because we don't have time, so directly to results. We didn't uh, find any significant effect on the mesocarnivore abundance, so this seems to say that we were not in this previous uh, mesocarnivore predator release context. On the other way around, we, found, we did find a negative effect on scent marking behavior, mainly on martens and badgers. So returning to our hypothetical uh, expectations where despite there was not an effect on the mesocarnivore abundance, a modification of the scent marking behavior may lead to a modification of the dispersal pattern of fleshy fruited species that are dispersed by, by the mesocarnivores. Of course, we don't know which may be those effects, but it certainly deserves further attention and should be studied according to us. Well, second example, if we were the uh, Iberian lynx, uh, with a similar uh, approach, it suffered a contraction of its range in the last century, but now, uh, in this case, not uh, owing to natural expansion, but because uh, human interventions are, and range reductions, they are narrowly expanding. Uh, here you have a picture of a lynx release, and we have uh, again selected these areas in which the animals are expanding, and we have uh, again performed a design in which we studied areas with the links and without the links with the, objection, with the object of uh, answering this question. In this case, <coughs> if Iberian clicks presence decrease the mesocarnivore abundance, and if such a fat may cascade into the small mammal community, into the rolling community. Well, here you have the results for the mesocarnivore community, and as you can see, there was a general decrease in the abundance of the mesocarnivore in the presence of the lynx. This was true for all members in the community except for the badger that it was not affected. 
In this other graph, you can see the change in abundance again for carnivores in, in orange, but in blue, you can see the, the increase in abundance of the small mammal community, of the rodent community. So at this point, we, uh, we wonder if this uh, increase in the, mammal, uh, in the small mammal community may also cascade into one of their main food resources, the acorns of oak species. Well, for this, we performed a, a, a small experiment, again with the design of the presence and absence of links, and we studied the shrimp removal rates of archons by small rodents. And we detected that in the presence of links, small mammals perceived a lower predation risk, leading to a higher removal rate of acorns where, uh, in the, uh, where links were present. So, Again, uh, in this uh, theoretical approach, we see that the presence of links did reduce, did control the populations of the meso carnivores, and this uh, also cascade into the small mammal community, which also lead to an effect on the producer's level at the, at the level of, of, of acorns of seeds. We don't know if these seeds that were removed were predated or, or have a chance to, to effectively disperse and thereby recruit. But we, we guess, our guess is that this may have an effect on the regeneration dynamics of the, of the plants. And also, the reduce in abundance of the mesocarnivores will probably have an effect on the regeneration dynamics and the seed dispersal of the fleshy fruited species. That, again, needs to be further studied. Well, and uh, now that we have established the effects of uh, ecosystem effects of passive rewilding and the p potential effects of trophy rewilding in the Mediterranean, I want to a little bit think about which may be the interactive effects of both when happening together. <coughs> well, here you have uh, the first map that, that we already have seen, only focusing on the Mediterranean basin. And in violet, you can see in the expansion uh, areas for the lynx and in orange, the expansion areas for the bull. So it is clearly an overlap of the, this traffic rewilding and passive uh, rewilding. So what we can expect in this uh, context? Well, uh, coming back to the ecosystem effects of passive rewilding, we can expect in the context of afforestation and vegetation recovery, a reduction in this, in this effect, especially for those fleshy fruited species and for oaks. Uh, well, for oaks, we have seen that we don't know, clearly, we don't clearly know what happened with the acorns, but probably the regeneration dynamics of these species may be modified. A solid quality improvement and erosion reduction, and also uh, the reduce of CO2 emissions are very related to afforestation and vegetation recovery. They will probably be modified and, and reduced. But on the other way, biodiversity reduction, especially for these um, for these plants, for these um, pasture lands communities that usually decrease with the afforestation process, we can expect an, an increase. And also we can expect a modification on the, on the fire regime. And well, in a nutshell, um, traffic and passive rewilding are currently occurring in the Mediterranean basin. The interactive effects of these two management strategies are poorly known. However, we have uh, already enough knowledge to propose hypotheses that we can test. And according to our point of view, we should do it because this is something that is currently ongoing when we as scientists have the responsibility to provide some answers, at least from the scientific point of view. And that's all. Thank you to all the co-authors of the, of the talk, especially to Emilio to give me the uh, opportunity to, to put off the of the pieces of this puzzle together to Tamara and Marina because she did all the field work and Juanpe because he was very sympathetic when I invited him to invite this kind of maybe crazy symposium and of course you for your attention. <laughs>